Well, hello. Uh, like was said, I'm going to be presenting on uh, getting started in Fedora QA, or just a quick primer for, um, well, I, what I like to call tips and tricks, uh, things that I found useful um, in uh, my endeavors in testing. Uh, so let's get started. Um, the scope of the talk, it's going to be very high level. Uh, like I said, it'll be tips and tricks that I personally found valuable that I think um, other people could use. Uh, there will be a technical side and then a human side, and then questions at the end. Uh, the way my brain works is very hit or miss, so we might move along quickly, but uh, hopefully I get my, my point across. Um, so here's the testing. What do you need? You just need a, a Fedora account and a Bugzilla account, really. Uh, one thing I did forget to say is this presentation is on the DevConf website. So if you want to download it, all of these blue links are hyperlinks to uh, the associated information. Um, but this is why we do it. Uh, this, these all came from the Fedora Reddit page. Uh, this one, uh, this guy had a bug having problems with it, and it started working. Uh, this guy not only was able to upgrade, but uh, it felt solid, too. And this one's my personal favorite. Uh, <laughs> he wants to switch, and so must be doing something right. <laughs> um, so the, the first thing, I, I want to give a little background information, um, and so I will start with a question, what is a compose? Um, a compose is a compilation of packages that are rolled together into a bootable image. Um, ideally, it happens every day, but sometimes, for various reasons, one or another, that doesn't happen. Um, the composers are called rawhide until a compose is chosen to be branched, and from that branch, uh, you'll get the next numbered Fedora release. So at some point in the line, uh, I think it's at the end of February for Fedora 30, we'll branch from Rawhide, and uh, that will become Fedora 30. Uh, there's three that I've found, three main categories of testing in Fedora. Uh, one is validation testing. Uh, which is uh, running individual tests against a, a certain compose. Um, there's Bugzilla, uh, or uh, playing with the, the blocker bugs, which we'll get into in a minute, and the freeze and se exceptions, and the, uh, the updates testing repository, uh, where all the packages that are not yet stable still need what we call karma to um, go stable uh, sit. Uh, so validation testing, um, we run different tests to validate a compose. Um, and we use the release criteria as, a, as the standards that we work against. Uh, if a bug appears to violate one of them, uh, that will become a blocker. Uh, let's see, I'm running behind. Um, in, in order to, to test, you, f you follow the, the test matrices here. Let's see. <laughs> Which looks like this. Uh, it, it, this is for the most recent uh, compose of Rawhide. Uh, and on this page, you can download any image you want. Um, and then here are the tests. And let's see. Um, huh. just, just for example, we'll, uh, we'll go with this test. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this, uh, this test is one of the tests that we have that hasn't been run in 
a while because we don't have the proper hardware. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, the test will have a brief description, how you need to set it up, and then how to test, uh, and some expected results. And if you run this, and as assuming that you get the expected results, you will, uh, let's see. You can edit the wiki page here to uh, show your input, your, your pass, your fail, your in progress, and it'll end up looking like this if, if you pass, or I don't think any of these have failed. Oh, so a, a failure with a link to the bug in Bugzilla, or, or a note. And here's an example of a, uh, one that's linked to the Bugzilla page. So on that topic, um, that fiber channel over Ethernet, if anybody's got that kind of hardware at home and you feel like helping us out, we could sure use the help, because none of us have that. Um, hmm. so, so we track bugs on Bugzilla. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> um, this is where you, you can uh, submit a bug if you have a problem. It's also where uh, you can get feedback on bugs, or, or people can give feedback um, or requests for enhancements. Um, after the branch, well, but depending, we'll have a blocker bugs meeting every Monday at 1600 UTC, where we discuss all the bugs that are currently uh, blocking the release. Um, and we'll vote on them, uh, whether, whether they violate any of the, re the release criteria. Um, it's a good way to contribute if you've never contributed to QA before. And something that I found especially helpful was to act as the secretary during a blocker bugs meeting. Uh, the secretary really just monitors the meeting. Uh, you, you can input, but it's your job to monitor. And then once the meeting's over, uh, go back and um, uh, <laughs> update each bug with what decision was made during the meeting. Um, it's, it's a good way to teach you how the process works and how to use Bugzilla as well. The uh, third way of, of contributing um, would be the updates testing repository, which is where packages pending review um, and ultimately inclusion into Fedora, the stable repository, wait until they're tested adequately. And the general rule is three positive votes that a, a uh, package is working and it will be pushed stable, but uh, whoops. <laughs> it, it's um, often the case that packages don't get tested and they sit for uh, a, a long period of time uh, before something happens to them. Um, there's multiple ways to configure to test from the repository. You can permanently enable um, the repository or uh, just enable it when you want to test updates from the, the repository. Uh, and there, there would be an example how to do that. The easiest way I've found to 
test updates, and then submit the information was using Fedora Easy Karma, uh, which is a tool that, it's a command line tool that allows you to quickly comment and add or subtract Karma from updates. Uh, I found that if I used the Karma page, the, the actual web page, I could do maybe 10 an hour, um, but using Fedora Easy Karma, you can do 10 in five minutes uh, if you're really moving. Um, you, you have to add your, your Fedora account ID into uh, this file that doesn't exist until you, until you make it. But um, So now let's go from the technical side more to the personal side. Um, it can seem kind of daunting to jump into a meeting or to post your results, uh, but it, it, it's really not. It's, it's not a difficult and it's not something that you should be worried about. Um, Fedora totally relies on community input. Um, Red Hat does support the project, but I think there's maybe 10 employees uh, and there's no way that they could, we could uh, get everything that needs to get tested or, or needs to get done in the QA community with, or w without the community. Um, and if somebody's, I found the best way to gain a foothold is to have a differing opinion and have the ability to defend it that will make people understand that, hey, maybe, maybe the way that we've been thinking about things uh, is not the only way. Um, and I say common sense rules apply, uh, meaning the more you participate, the more you'll be known, and the more um, your input will influence the whole uh, process. Um, so how do test results help? Just from uh, this last release, Fedora 29, um, which uh, branched or was frozen um, August 28th, and it was released October 30th, there were 1,074 bugs reported. Um, there were 671 tests run on the validation test matrix and there were uh, 1,685 individual karma given to updates testing, uh, or updates in the updates testing repo, uh, which averages to 17 bugs a day, uh, 11 tests a day, or 27 karma a day, which uh, for one person or two people or even a team of 10, that's a lot. Uh, so having the community input there is what makes this possible. To wrap up, I have some tips. Uh, if you're a remote worker like I am, I've found that finding somebody in town to talk to about this uh, really helps me um, kind of see the bigger picture. I, I'm lucky to have a coworker in town and we'll meet up maybe once a month for coffee and just talk about things in Fedora land. And uh, that really seems to help me. Um, something else I found was to make a list of IRC names and the associated uh, position within Fedora that they hold and their email because trying to keep track of that is really difficult, especially when you're trying to find the guy who works on that one thing that you had something to do with once upon a time. Um, uh, and again, don't be afraid to jump into a meeting. That's the best way that I've found to make yourself known and to gain some traction within the community. And uh, when you're acting as the blocker bug secretary, <laughs> make sure your amendments to the whiteboard are 100% correct. Otherwise, you'll crash, crash the blocker bugs page. Um, but that's all I've got. Are there any questions? So I, have, I have an addition from a comment. Um, another really good way you can help test is 
test days, which are test. Um, run regularly. Um, sort of, usually once we get to about the sort of branch point or stake, there'll be a series of test days for various things, like we'll have a known test day or networking test day or a kernel test day. Um, these get announced on mailing lists, they get announced on tests, I'm not sure where else the manager um, level is the guy who runs these, and they just come out on Twitter and various social communities. And those are generally really good events to get started at because they're focused on one thing. We'll be a bunch of other people doing the event at the same time as you, and we try to have at least one related developer present at the event. So you basically you jump on IRC, there'll be instructions on a wiki page about how you do the test, and you just provide the feedback there. But there are lots of people to talk to who can help you out while you're doing it. Adam was talking about test days. Uh, in case you didn't hear. Um, after the beta, sure. Uh, after about the beta, we'll have test days um, where a specific package will be targeted to be tested. And uh, for one day, that is, um, th that is the goal, just testing this package. And that's a great way to help, uh, especially with new changes coming into Fedora. Um, we'll often put those through a test day to make sure. Uh, for example, in 29, there was a DNF uh, 3 test day. Um, yeah, and a, a lot of bugs were found uh, because of the test day. and So that's a great way to, to add. Anything else? Yeah. That <laughs> the question was, if nobody tests the fiber channel over Ethernet, why does it remain in the test matrix? And, and to be less troubling, I guess, like how often does it happen that the test matrices get pruned or there's additional stuff? Is there some reasonable way that a person could, I don't know, see which of the stuff is not tested for a while and maybe propose that some changes should be made? Yeah, the, the addition was, is there a way to see what the coverage is on any given test case? And uh, Adam's got a website that documents this uh, pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up. This is a view over time of each test uh, in each category from the matrix uh, with coverage pass fail uh, over here and whether or not the, that individual test is, or, or what release criteria that test falls under. Um, but this is a good way. In fact, this is the way that the QA team uses to prove coverage uh, at a go, no go meeting towards the very end of the release cycle. It's, it's just super handy for testing because you can look and if you see just gray dots, that means no one's run that test, so it's probably a good idea to run it. Gray dots here meaning no one's run the test. Uh, so a good idea if, if you want to, to run that particular test. Uh, notice too that uh, a lot of these tests with um, a release criterion lay, uh, level uh, have good coverage, but the ones here that are optional don't because they're optional, so they're not uh, release blocking. Any other questions? Good talk. Well, no, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.